Hey everybody, it's GliderCat and it's time to play. In this video, we're going to take a look at what I think is an amazing factory game and it's called Evo Space. Now the game is currently available in early access on Steam and it has been for quite a while now. So if you like what you see, you can pick it up today on Steam. How did I learn about Evo Space? Well, a couple of subscribers to the GliderCat channel actually recommended this game to me in the comments of a video about another factory game. Uh, that I feature here on the channel. I think I think it might have been Foundry. If it might maybe in a video, one of the early videos of Foundry. I think um, I had one or two people recommend Evo Space, uh, and that's what prompted me to look it up. Now somehow this game slipped by me when it first became available in early access. Uh, and if it slipped by you too, and you're a factory gamer, then you will appreciate this video. I'm sure of it, especially if you're a hardcore <laughs> factory gamer. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we go on. And uh, thankfully, the developer granted my request for a review key, so I'm able to tell you all about Evo Space right now. At the time of putting this video together, I have about 40 hours in the game, and honestly, I've barely scratched the surface. I tend to say that a lot, but by the end of the video, again, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because this is a big game. Now, that said, I have played enough to get a good feel for what the game is all about, so let's get to it. Uh, we'll start by watching the latest official trailer for the game, and then while that runs, I'll read the short description of the game from Steam. There's not much there, but I'll read what there is. Then after the trailer runs, I'll take you on a tour of my current factory, and we'll dive into a bunch of the details about Evo Space and how it plays. And uh, let's get started. Okay, here is the trailer. Evo Space is a sandbox game with a fully dynamic, procedurally generated world. It's a game about digging, exploring, building, and technologies. You can create buildings, small or large. It all depends on the player's imagination. Maybe you'll build a cozy house by the seacoast, surrounded by woods. Or maybe you'll decide to build a giant processing plant in the middle of desert hills. Maybe both. <laughs> players can explore an infinite world, gather resources, craft, and build automated factories, the scale and complexity of which will only increase during the game. All right, so that is the game's trailer and a little bit of the Steam description. There's not a whole lot of Steam description there, uh, to tell you the truth, at least not at this point. So now let's, let me show you, <laughs> let me show you my factory. Now it's a work in progress, so you're going to have to uh, pardon the dust, but it's definitely under construction. But let me show you the whole thing started out with this little tiny setup here. I've got a, a little copper furnace. And then a uh, smelter up here that made some, initially I think it was copper ingots. These are the inserters or robotic arms. And that was feeding a storage box here. And I just, right now I just got a bunch of junk in here. But you can see uh, soon after I got started, I needed to produce uh, fuel, a fuel source. And so in order to set that up, I've got, uh, I'll just walk you through some of the components here. I've got an atmospheric compressor here. And that's generating water out of the air. And this guy is capable of generating other gases as well. But right now I've got it set to doing water. Here you can see a Stirling engine. And these just look so freaking cool to me. But this Stirling engine is working off of heat power to generate kinetic energy. And it's getting heat power from another one of those little, whoops, one of the copper furnaces in this case. There's a little copper furnace and it's feeding in something called coke, which is like a refined coal product. So that's producing some heat energy. The Stirling engine is turning the heat energy into kinetic energy. And then this atmospheric condenser is taking that kinetic energy and pulling water out of the air. Where's the water go? Well, it's immediately coming out of this little pipe here, tiny little connection. I got these butt up right next to each other. 
to an automatic farm. And now this guy is producing wood for me. And that wood, there's a box of wood right there. That wood is being moved by this uh, robotic arm into a large Coke oven. And the first process, we look in here, it's taking wood and it's turning it into coal. It takes a little bit of time to do it. You can see it takes, I think, 100, 100 seconds per batch. I can't remember how many per batch. And then I got another robotic arm here placing that coal into another Coke oven. And this one is actually producing the Coke from the coal. And then I've got a storage box here, just kind of collecting it. I don't know if there are splitters in the game, belt splitters. So I'm kind of using a storage box with uh, robotic arms around it to effectively make a splitter. But there may be splitters in the game that I've just haven't found yet, or they are coming. So yeah, so some of that Coke goes down this conveyor, down the vertical conveyor here and feeds the little furnace, some energy to kind of keep this whole process going. And then I've got another belt of this fuel feeding another couple, couple of uh, furnaces over here. And now these furnaces, these are heat pipes coming off. This is how I can conduct heat energy throughout my factory. If we look and see where that heat's going, I've got it all routed kind of underground here. I've got a couple lights here. They'll kick on once it's uh, nighttime. So I've got a whole network of heat transfer down here, transferring the heat from those furnaces using heat pipes. I need to get uh, more stairs set up, but <laughs> let me hop back up here. We can kind of see where that's going to go. So then the heat pipe is, is uh, powering a couple Sterling engines over here. And that kinetic energy is feeding a couple cutter machines and they're taking stone from this big mining rig. This guy's mining stone. The stone is coming out of the mining rig here, feeding into a container here just for pure stone that I'll use uh, when I need pure stone. That's the stuff here. And then it's feeding into this guy that's kind of acting like a splitter. I could have put a little tiny section of belt there. It would do the same thing. It's being cut into uh, another form of stone, and then it's being cut into stone bricks that I can use for building. And those stone bricks are kind of what you see. Uh, it's what we're standing on. So it's these guys. So I've got a little automation there going. Let me uh, pull these up with my multi-tool. So we saw all that, and there's another kinetic energy, some heat or some heat energy feeding another Sterling engine that's running the mining drill. Okay, that's pretty much all that set up. And then here I've got some kinetic energy feeding another two Sterling engines. And then these Sterling engines are connected to uh, a generator. There's a little generator here that's taking this kinetic energy and turning it into electricity. And then that electricity is feeding two computers here. These are computers. They're not doing anything right now. And what are the computers for? The computers are for the research. Now, I'm going to change the daytime just so we can uh, stay where we can see what's going on here. Because we can actually toggle the time of day here if I want from morning, midday, later day, and nighttime. And then the lights come on at night. So you saw the little lights pop on here. So it looks kind of cool. I think the heat pipes look cool and I really like the copper. Anyway, back to the research. Let me put us back on daytime for now. Now the research tree, you move your way down the research tree by doing different types of calculations. So let's bring it up. It is extensive. So here is the research tree. These are all the things you can research. There's uh, quite a few things to research here. Now, these ones in green are the ones that so far I've, I've completed the research on all these in my current playthrough. I've got about 40 hours in the game in this session, maybe 30 hours on this uh, factory. So that's all the research. And how do you move down the research tree? Well, if you look, each one of these items, these are the ones I currently can research here. There's these little plus signs, and these indicate... Base, this is kind of like science packs. This indicates what type of computations in this case you need to complete in order to meet this uh, research, complete the research. 
So this is showing I need 2.56 thousand basic computations and 32 complex computations to do it. Now the computers are the ones doing these computations. So let's take a look at the computer. We'll right click on one of these guys and I'll pick a re matter of fact, let me do this guy. Cause I think I didn't pick a recipe on this one. Uh, so here's the different type of computations here off to the left of the screen. So basic computations, that's the earliest one you can do. And all it takes is energy. And that's what these two computers are doing. I'm just feeding them some power in the back here, right? I've got heat energy from those uh, furnaces, converting that to kinetic energy via these Stirling engines. And then I have a generator here that's generating electricity. And that's all I'm feeding into these guys. So they're doing these basic calculations for me. But as you can see, there's multiple types of calculations that need to be done. So we saw in the tech tree that some of them require these complex computations. And in order to do those, I need to feed a computer, not only energy, not only electricity, but also at least advanced circuit, at least advanced circuits. And if I want it to be more efficient, I can provide processors or quantum circuits or quantum processors, and that'll get me more calculations per cycle. Now, producing these circuits is non-trivial. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you the ones that I have produced now. And I'm just producing the, the advanced circuits here. Or no, the regular circuits here, and we'll go see that. But right now I've got a couple of computers just doing basic calculations here. I don't have any research selected, so they're not running. All right, that's how my whole place kind of started. Then once I did some, uh, you know, when you first come onto the map, you're gonna be looking in the dirt. You can watch the Let's Play season I've got. Uh, it's gonna post a couple days probably after this video. But in the very beginning, you're gonna mine ore by hand, just like you're used to in just about every single factory game there is. And here's some copper ore. We can mine that by hand. Boom, grab it. Look at my inventory. It should be in here somewhere. Maybe my inventory is so full it didn't pick it up. Let's see if I get rid of some logs. Uh, there's iron ore. Let's just see if I drill this and I can show you. Copper ore. Boom. Let's see if I can pick that up. Man, my inventory is so full that it's not picking it up. Let's go and get rid of some more stuff. Rid of that. There it is, copper ore. So initially, like I said, like just about every factory game there is, you're going to start out by mining copper by hand, smelting it by hand, hand feeding it into that little tiny furnace setup that I showed you right there, getting some copper bars and crafting those uh, robotic arms and things. But then eventually you can start building out factories. And this one I think looks pretty cool so far. So I've just started, it's still very much under construction, but you'll find uh, copper deposits and then you can set up these mining rigs to mine copper. Now there's a map for the game. So here's where we are now. And here's this big copper deposit. It's got hundred K of copper and I've just got one mining rig on there, but I can put a ton. And then we've got other materials as well. I believe this is uranium. And then I've got uh, some initial steel or iron production going on too. We'll walk over there also, but I just want to show you this. Let me go ahead and flip on the day again. So that's the easiest way to see what's going on. So here's my little copper processing facility. I've got a mining drill here. Uh, the ore is being pounded and refined into a different form of copper. That's getting smelted into bars and placed in the storage bins. And then I have a third line here that's sending the copper down, the copper ingots down over this way, down a vertical belt over, over, over. And here we've got our first assemblers and these guys are building a uh, copper wire. So they take in the copper ingots, they do some assembly work and out comes copper wire. So I have those being fed by those two robotic arms. And then I take that copper wire along with some circuit boards that are being produced back over that way. They're actually made out of wood, which is kind of funny. And so I combine the circuit boards with the wire coils and out comes circuits. 
And in this case, the way things work or the way I've set things up here, I've actually got a little downstairs area. Whoops, I'm going back up the stairs here. And it actually might be good to put it on nighttime here and the lights will pop on. So this all looks pretty cool to me. Anyway, so I've got a robotic arm underneath each one of these assemblers. And it's uh, outputting the circuits underground and then back up underneath this other input belt of circuit boards. So you can kind of see how this all works. And then I mentioned, oh, and then I've got, uh, you know, some power generation here. I've got coke being routed down here, put into furnaces. Again, Sterling engines paired up with uh, generators, electric generators. And then I've got electricity going up. So that's a electric cable there. And these guys are connected up, providing some electricity. And these are also power cables. So that's another form of energy. Here's more of those heat pipes we saw. So you can power different machines with different things. Oh, I put a little chair down here. <laughs> a little chair, a little chair and a door. So uh, anyway, I've got to do more decorating, but let's head back up. Let's go back to daytime. And it runs on a normal daytime cycle, but you can just toggle it as you need to. And doing YouTube videos, it helps being able to brighten it up. All right, there's our circuit boards. We've already kind of seen production lines, so we don't need to see that. But here are a couple more computers. Now these guys, they're set to doing the advanced computations. And right now they've got nine of them stored up. They take electricity and these circuits to do the advanced computations. Hopefully this all makes sense. We're going to the research tree again. And so here's an example of something that takes the basic ones. That's the computer that's, that just take electricity. And then here's the advanced computations. And that the, this uh, research will require these computers as well. If I go ahead and select it and start that research, you can now see these computers kick on and start doing some computations. And they start chewing up those electric circuits. All right. Pretty cool. Now that tech tree again is enormous. There is a ton of stuff to do. And as you get further down the tech tree, as you can imagine, the type of calculations you need to do are super expensive to, uh, to make this happen. And you need many, 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 um, of the basic calculations. So I think there's one in here that's over a hundred K. I'm probably not going to find it. You may see it. There it is. A hundred and sixty four thousand basic computations to complete this gas turbine research along with 256 ultimate cal computations and for the ultimate you need some more advanced circuits than what i've got here and you'll have to set up a production line for those so we just saw the production line for circuits then i'll show you a little bit more hopefully this is helpful to give you a feel for the game and what you'll be doing up here i have a larger scale um Coke production facility doing basically uh, making fuel. We kind of saw this set up already at the top of the video or top of my base tour here. Got a condenser doing water, wood, coal, and then Coke. And in this case, I have it routed out the back here. And this uh, Coke is powering um, all of this stuff that you see here. Basically the copper mine, all the heat generation there is being fueled by this Coke plant right here. And anywhere we need heat energy, same thing. It's being, this Coke is being routed where it's needed, it needs to go. Cool. All right. So that's a lot of heat generation. We saw a tiny bit of electrical generation underneath here. Let me show you what else I got going on in my factory. I built this bridge here. It's pretty cool. The environment is pretty sweet. I think in this, uh, in this game, I wish there was more to actually do to interact with it, but it looks pretty darn good to me. Let's head over and I'll show you what I've been working on most recently. And then I'll show you um, the crafting menu. So you saw how extensive the tech tree is. That's a huge uh, challenge in the game to pursue. Okay, here I've got another Coke plant. This one I'm making scalable vertically. So this is going to be a massive uh, production facility for manufacturing coke or fuel that we're going to burn We've got another layer here i'm not even using it yet this is all a work in progress and i'm ready to expand up to a third floor so head back down the stairs the wrong way boom 
you can't take any physical damage as far as I know in the game. So right now, this coke, you can follow it through the trees here. I tried to leave the trees because I think they look pretty awesome. I got a little pathway going through them here. There's all that coke being routed over here. This is what I've just been working on in my factory. And this is going to be an electric power plant. So I've got coke coming in. Goes uh, into a furnace here. That generates heat. Or that's a, that generates heat. And it transfers that heat to this boiler unit here. And there's a little gauge here showing the pressure in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, we got water coming in from the atmospheric condenser. Water and heat create steam. That steam goes through this pipe into... Let me, let me uh, change the daytime here. This stuff looks cool. The uh, steam comes into this huge uh, turbine, steam turbine. This guy generates kinetic energy, I believe. Yeah, and then feeds this generator. Yeah, steam turbine into this large generator. And then this large generator spits out power. And I've got... Uh, I've got two lines set up right now, and I'm just trying to experiment and see how many I'm going to need. But I'm going to try and run as much of my base on electric power as I can. And then now I've got underneath here, it's a little hard to see because it's dark and in these shadowy places here. But I've got that power actually routed back right now. It's fueling the uh, some electric motors that are driving the atmospheric condensers that are getting us our water. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, these machines here are of the steel tier. So they're kind of like a tier two level machine. And if we look in the crafting menu, boom, over here on the right, I'm just going to pick all. Boom. Uh, this, These are all the materials in the game. So there's a few. These ones don't even have icons yet. But I'm guessing, you know, we're still in early access, so stuff is being added all the time. These are all the different dusts <laughs> that are in the game. So, yeah, there's a lot, a lot to this game. Let me just show you the tiers. So you'll start out kind of at the copper tier. I mentioned in the very beginning, you're going to mine some copper by hand. And then you'll make handcraft some of these items, like the handcraft, the furnace, and then you'll get a smelter and you'll get your iron, your copper bars and you'll basically be living in the copper tier for a while. Then you'll get iron mining going and you'll get steel. I don't think I showed that. We walked right by it, but I've got a little bit of steel uh, being produced over here. Let's see if I can make it around these trees. Nope. Boom. Head over here. I'll show you. I've got a tiny little uh, steel factory here getting started. Boom. And this one right now is powered by the Coke facility. But I'm going to, and I need coke in order to make the steel. This is a huge uh, blast furnace, and it takes coke and iron, impure ore dust, in order to make steel. And then I'm pounding those steel ingots into plates with this guy. And storing some steel plates in here for my construction needs. Anyway, so I'm entering the steel tier here. We look off to the right, so there's a ton of different machines and structures and things that you're able to build, and you're going to work your way up. I don't know. It's not really a tech tree, right? We saw the tech tree, um, and you are going to have to unlock these through the tech tree, but you're going to work your way up these materials, and as you move up, you have some of the same machines. Like here, we've got a cutter machine for steel and for stainless steel and for titanium and for hard metal. As you work up, the tiers here get to more sophisticated metals. Things become more efficient, faster. They do a better job as you move up this tree. So that's another huge part of the game that you're going to be pursuing. In addition to just having these machines leveled up, like a faster cutting machine, as you move through the tiers, new types of machines kind of become available to you. So for example, I can see we've got a solar panel here that's going to come available to me as soon as I enter the stainless steel age and unlock that technology and start refining stainless steel. I'll get uh, I'll get the ability to build solar panels and generate some energy that way. Looks like I'll get a pump jack for the first time. I don't see those up here in the steel, kind of the steel age. So yeah, lots to research, lots to do. The machines look awesome. This is a steel version. 
of the uh, Sterling engine. We saw the copper one. It was a little more shiny. And then eventually we'll get the stainless steel and I imagine we'll be shiny again. This is actually a copper, copper lever, level mining rig. So you saw the complexity of the tech tree. You saw the complexity of the crafting menu. What you haven't seen yet is the complexity of how you refine ores and it is complex. <laughs> so if I uh, center click with my mouse on this iron ore that I've got, this is just fresh out of the ground iron ore. And I use the center mouse button, click on it. I can see, okay, if you've got iron ore, what can you turn it into? In this case, there's only one thing I can do with iron ore. I can turn it into iron impure ore gravel. And I do that by hammering it. So here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the iron ore and I'm running it through this hammer to get the gravel. And that's, this is the gravel. You see it right here. You bring up the daytime again. It's a little easier to see. Then what do I do with it? Well, you can see there's some more machines processing it. Let's take a look. We'll go back, center click. If I center click on the, this icon here for the impure ore gravel, what can I do with that? Boom. Well, I can run it through a macerator and turn it into impure ore dust, or I can combine it with water in this ore washer and I get iron ore gravel, not impure gravel, but I'll get regular gravel. I'll get some chrome oxide dust and I'll get some ore water, which is kind of like a waste product, I think. There might be something we can do with that. Now, it looks like you can just get rid of it. So this is saying, what can you do with ore water? You can dump it in one of these fluid dumps, which is basically like the trash. I can hit the backspace key to go back. Well, you're going to be looking through, seeing how you can get the most out of your ore as you play this game. Like this is a way if you need chrome oxide dust, you're going to want to wash your iron impure ore gravel through an ore washing machine. And you won't be able to do it until you get to the steel age because there's not one available. So this is showing the different levels available. This is copper, steel, stainless steel and titanium or whatever the rest are. So you'll spend some time in this tree. It's super detailed and helpful to figure out how you want to process your materials, but there is a lot of stuff that you can do to uh, come up with some pretty complex uh, production chains to, again, extract as much as you can, as, as much material as you can out of the various uh, resource deposits. Now, if we go back to the map, you can see there's a, several different types of resources. I believe it's an infinite or near infinite map. Um, you'll notice that the deposits look like they end here and you know, on the north side of this map or the top half, we're not seeing any ore deposits. They're there. We just got to research a scanner, I believe, and then they'll, they'll start to pop up and we can see what's available to us. So that is the Grand Factory Tour, very much under construction, but I hope I, uh, I wanted to convey to you the coolness of these models. Like the Sterling engine is one of my favorite things in the game. Just so far that I've experienced, it's just so cool looking. That's a copper one. Again, it's kind of shiny. Very cool. A lot of time and artistic work has gone into uh, building the models. I think they're the best I've ever seen in a uh, factory game for sure. And then, wow, the tech tree. Oh my gosh. That thing is enormous enormous you're gonna keep pretty busy and then the third thing yeah that we talked about uh all the crafting all the different materials you can build look at this and it's growing this list is growing several different tiers of machines each getting more efficient than the previous and new machines coming online as you uh new types of machines becoming available as you move through the different uh, materials and then last but not least we talked about all the different processes for um for working with your uh, materials here and converting them into other materials extracting different dusts you saw in the inventory list here all the different look at this look at all these different materials that are either you're mining directly and crushing them into this to get these uh dusts or you're washing certain ores and these dusts come off as part of a of uh some industrial processing so very cool. I hope that gives you a good feel for what you're in for if you buy Evo Space or you get into it. I'm loving the game. 
it plays to me a bit slower than most factory games because when you start out, you, you know, you're, you're kind of at the bottom tier of everything. These little inserters, look how slow they move. They're super duper slow. These don't require any power, by the way. But everything's kind of slow at the copper tier. And then as you move up, I think we've got some, uh, I think these guys are running on steel, on uh, steel robotic arms. I don't know if we'll get to see. It looks like we're full up on something. This line is kind of slowed down. But these, uh, these, the, you can see these robotic arms move a lot faster. That's the second tier. And we've got several tiers to go. So stuff can start moving pretty quick uh, as you move up. But yeah, I tell you what, uh, I really like the creativity that's gone into this game and the complexity. So if you're in for a game like this, there's different colored building blocks, by the way. You, can, you don't have to do all the same colored brick like I'm doing. Um, I'm just getting started. There's the lights, and I think there's different types of lights as well. But yeah, huge sandbox. I think right now the main there's no enemies, there's no biters, no spitters, no worms, none of that kind of stuff yet. I don't know if that's uh, planned or not. The game's been under development uh, for quite a few years. It's available in early access still on Steam. And man, tons to do. So if you're looking for a game that's going to give you lots and lots and lots of hours and you like this kind of sandbox environment and you like kind of the feeling of completion and having like very very large goals <laughs> very large challenges to accomplish with very complex production production chains this i can think of no better game i don't think uh, factorio gets anywhere near the uh the level of defect um complexity and sophistication that uh, that this game has right now. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this first look of Evo Space. Like I said, I've got about 40 hours into it. I'm loving it. I've got hundreds of hours left to play. I've only scratched the surface. I showed you I'm just starting a, my first basic power plant. I haven't touched oil. I haven't touched uranium. I haven't touched a bunch of the resources and I'm only in the second tier out of like six materials. And then you already saw how far I am on the tech tree. It's not very far, but anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving the, this uh, video a thumbs up that helps my tiny channel grow. And if you like learning about new games, I really suggest you check out the first look playlist. This video is in that playlist. And so are a lot of other cool games, uh, first look videos. So take a look there. For now, this is Gladder Cat saying again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.